There was peace after David and his men returned from their raid on the Amalekites. Every man, woman, and child had been rescued, and he was hailed as a hero once again. David spent his time rebuilding Ziklag for his people. He had been keeping himself busy. He had been trying not to think about the fate of the battle in which he had almost fought. He had been trying not to think about Saul and his army. News had come about the battle on Mount Gilboa. David was informed about how the Philistines had routed the Israelite army and killed the sons of the king. But worse still, Saul, anointed king of the Lord, was dead. David's heart was heavy at the loss of Saul. For all their animosity, David loved his king. David wrote of his loss for the king. While his soul ached, he composed a lament for Saul. He was determined all of the people of Judah should be taught the lament so they should not forget their fallen king and all he had done for them. After some time, David inquired of the Lord. He asked, Shall I return to Judah? Shall I go to the cities, Lachish, Arad, Hebron? And the Lord replied, Go to Hebron. David brought his men and their families to settle in the city of Hebron. The elders of Judah came to Hebron and anointed David king over the lands of Judah and all of its people. Meanwhile, in the city of Gibeah, Saul's only surviving son, the young Ishbosheth, became king of Israel and Judah after his father's death. A courier has come with news from the south. He was told of Judah proclaiming David king in the south. The young king of Israel vowed to crush David and put an end to his rebellion. The men of Judah rose up to fight for their king. Ishbosheth had called upon the Asherites, the Ephraimites, and Benjamites to fight for him. The men for David fought for their king, anointed by the Lord. Ishbosheth's men fought for the son of a fallen king. Each man fought fiercely. Many died bravely. David and Ishbosheth fought for two years. The war between the king of the Israelites was ended when a pair of misguided men murdered the son of Saul while he slept. David lamented the loss of Saul's only remaining son with sadness even though he knew it would put an end to the bloodshed. The men of Asher, Benjamin, Ephraim, and Israel came to David in Hebron. There they made a covenant with him and accepted his rule. As Saul had once done, David had united the tribes of Israel under one king, anointed by the Lord Almighty. David decided that his new capital city should lay in the middle of his kingdom and chose the Jebusite city of Jerusalem. The Jebusites of Jerusalem rejected David's plan to make their city his new home. They insulted the new king and stated he could not enter the city. David met with his top men to devise a plan to capture the city. David declared that whoever delivered the city to him would be made general of all his armies. David's men continue to devise a plan of attack. Meanwhile, Joab has gained some valuable information from the unlikeliest of sources. David led his army from Hebron north to Jerusalem, where they laid siege to the city. Joab spoke with an old beggar who told him of an alternative way to enter the city of Jerusalem. Joab explains his plan to the five. Enter the city through the secret waterway shown to him by the old beggar and open the gates to the city from the inside. It would be up to the five to deliver the city to David. Let's crack some skulls. Let's crack some skulls. Ah, greetings. 
I have been waiting for you for quite some time. Our apologies, my friend. Someone got us lost. Again. This again? How is this my fault? Can we not continue this eternal argument? There has been a complication with the city gate. You see, the defenders have removed the windlass that controls the opening mechanism. What does that mean? The gates cannot be opened without it. Hmm. If we can find some rope, a winch, and a heavy weighted stone, I could probably rig something together. Jerusalem was a small walled city built over the Gihon Spring. Its position on the steep ridges made it a good fortress. At the time of David, it covered less than 15 acres. Can't do that.
Some Bible translations indicate the attack on Jerusalem was initiated through a water shaft, such as Warren's shaft. However, the word translated as water shaft might have other meanings. Time to ship. I thought you'd never ask. Onward! After capturing Jerusalem, David repaired its walls. It is possible the damage to the walls was caused by an assault of... David and his army. Can't do that. Can't do that. 